elephant bird was over 9 feet tall, and some have even theorised that it could have weighed up to 850 kilograms, or maybe even a ton, which is extremely heavy. It's the world's biggest bird that we know of, and it was endemic to Madagascar, which means it could only be found on Madagascar. However, there has been an ongoing debate about when it went extinct. And to try and make a logical guess, we have to start from the beginning. Madagascar was settled in sometime in the first millennia. The earliest concrete date we have for settlement is 490 AD, although there have been some quite controversial previous datings, including a kill site in central Madagascar at Christmas River, dating to about 8500 BC. The earliest outside contact we can be sure of is about 700 to 900 AD by Arab and North African traders going to Madagascar. They don't note the elephant bird, but I think that's because they mainly stuck to the coasts. The elephant bird probably existed more commonly inland. For such a huge bird, we don't actually find much of their skeletal remains. And I think one of the reasons for this is because Madagascar is just so hot, it makes preservation of bones quite difficult. Another early source for the elephant bird we have was written by Marco Polo in 1298, and he writes in his memoirs, chapter, chapter 26, of reports of huge birds in Madagascar. He wrote that it couldn't fly and laid huge eggs. In the 1300s, a North African scholar called Ibn Battuta may have mentioned the elephant birds, although he does mention that they're able to fly, which many scientists do not believe because the elephant bird was just so heavy. It's important to note about um, other Madagascar megafauna. The Malagasy crowned eagle, for example, went extinct in the 1500s. There was this huge giant crocodile that went extinct probably about 1,000, 2,000 years ago. The Malagasy hippopotamus as well, probably 1600s. And there's this other sort of giant leopard type creature which has a very interesting name. It's called the Cryptoprocata spellia, which is quite hard to pronounce. It's also known as the giant fossa, which I found quite interesting. The first European sighted of Madagascar was in 1500s when Portugal viewed the island, but they weren't settled in by Europeans until 1509 when the French and Dutch went over and said thank you very much chaps, we're now going to take a bit of your land, which they did, they settled on the coast. But they didn't write about elephant birds this time, and this is likely because elephant birds tended to live more inland, and we can tell this from the skeletal remains we found of them. However, it is interesting to note that a lot of the eggs are found more on the beaches because it's generally believed that the um, elephant birds did actually nest on the beaches, but mostly in the south. I think we only have one eggshell in the north, which is 600 miles away from all the other eggshells. There's an article written by David Attenborough, and he theorises that um, the elephant bird actually went extinct, not because of overhunting, although we do have a quite strong evidence that they were hunted by the natives, but more because their eggs were eaten, which obviously made it difficult to keep up population counts. And we can tell this because we found eggshells in fire, you know, that they cooked them, ate them, and I hope they were very tasty because they were huge. The most recent physical evidence we have was dated to, and this is the eggshells, 1040 to 1380 AD, so ranging from 700 to 1000 years ago. But obviously just because we have a lack of fossil records doesn't mean that it couldn't have gone extinct far later. There are lots of other eggshells which haven't been carbon dated and a whole host of evidence that we haven't even started to test. The elephant bird eggs weren't really so much like chicken eggs or even ostrich eggs being about 120 times bigger than chicken and 7-8 times bigger than ostrich and 12,000 times bigger than hummingbird eggs which is interesting if you're into hummingbirds. Each egg could hold about 13 to 14 litres of liquid, which is why the Madagascar natives used to drink rum from them, which would have got you very drunk if you had all of it. The outside are more like pottery, instead of like actual eggs, as you can see from the images shown. In the 17 and 1800s, when people were having more contact with the Madagascar natives, they used to talk about the huge birds that laid these eggs, which would indicate they either still existed or hadn't gone extinct long enough ago that they were still in their memory. I was getting back on the, <clears throat> the French colony where in 1661 or 1658, the sources slightly differ, a French author called, 
called Elian de Flacourt. It's a very fancy name. And he was in Madagascar from 1648 to 1655 and wrote his things afterwards. So he mentioned huge eggs, the elephant bird eggs, and also talked about a bird which the natives called the Voron Patra. And I quote, It is a large bird that lives in Madagascar and makes eggs like the ostrich. It is a kind of ostrich. Sounds like an elephant bird. The inhabitants of these parts cannot catch it. It seeks the most deserted places. This coupled with the idea that some of the natives talked about a huge bird laying these eggs would indicate that they had some sort of idea. There's a man called John Jolliffe who was a surgeon on a ship and he recalled an 1848 conversation and he wrote this in his diaries um, with a French trader he states that the Madagascar natives stored rum in huge eggs. This is interesting to note because this is before the official discovery of the elephant bird and he notes that the eggs belong to a huge rare bird which is interesting and I'll get to that later. The elephant bird was first definitively proven, well to Europeans at least, to exist in 1851 when a French zoologist called Isidore Geoffrey Saint Hilary it's a bit of a mouthful, saw the giant eggs and bones, which proved definitively that it existed. In 1867, an Austro-German geologist claimed that Madagascar traders um, who went to Mauritius stored huge eggs. Also in 1867, French explorer Alfred Gran Didier, I think that's how you pronounce it, claimed that the elephant bird most likely does not exist anymore. And in 1869, the same man, Alfred, asked a local king about the elephant bird. And the king answered, he said, he hadn't personally seen her, but his ancestors had. And he went and showed Alfred these bones in a marsh, elephant bird bones. So it's interesting that he could recognise these birds as belonging to the elephant bird, because it's not easy to tell just from looking at bones, what sort of animal they belong to. And we can tell this by you know, the, all the hoaxes in America in the 1800s about the huge, giant skeleton human bones, and then they went and tested them, and most of them just belong to cave bears and the lot. If you're an amateur who doesn't know much about human bones and you see a cave bear bone, it could well look like a giant human bone. According to Christian missionaries to Madagascar, in 1890 the elephant bird was killed by natives. There's not actually any evidence backing up this claim. A bit of history in the 1890s, um, in 1896-97, Madagascar was actually unfortunately colonised by France and they brought Christianity with it and said, you know, goodbye to the Malagasy traditional religions because our god is so much better than your god. Another interesting footnote is from 1894 which says that the natives had have no knowledge of the bones, and if asked, say they're of the mythical monster called Pang Ani. In 1934, they tried to do a study by asking the natives about the elephant bird, and all the descriptions differed tremendously. If the elephant bird was alive at this point, they would have been, you know, you'd like to think somewhat consistent. Again in 1950, they did a study of the elephant bird by asking some of the natives what animal the eggs belonged to. And a lot of them started answering that they belonged to a man-eating ox, which is obviously nothing to do with the eggs. But this is in contrast to the 1848 source that states that the natives knew that the eggs belonged to a huge bird, which would indicate that the elephant bird hadn't quite passed out of cultural memory at that point, and they still knew what laid the eggs. Whilst I do find it convincing that the elephant bird did survive until at least 1661, where Flacourt described what I would view as quite a convincing description of the elephant bird, I think it's most likely that they went extinct quite shortly after that, because there's no other primary sources, written primary sources, that do relate to an actual living elephant bird. But the biggest argument against elephant birds surviving that long, I suppose, would be the actual physical dating of the remains, which in my opinion means we just need to sort of start dating more of them, really. And if the elephant bird was extinct by the time we reached the 1660s, when Flacourt described it, it must not have been extinct for that long before that, because the description he makes is very specific and accurate and it, the bird must not have been able to pass out of memory at that stage, even if it was extinct. Regardless, to find a more concrete date of extinction, 
of the hugest, biggest bird to ever live, it would be helpful to carbon date more bones and elephant bird egg fragments, which still can be found on the island every now and again. This would help us find a more coherent timeline. Thank you again to everyone who watched the video. I hope you really enjoyed it and look forward to my next one. And please, if you want to look at my Patreon, the link's in the bio below. That would be amazing. So thank you again and goodbye.